today I am going to uh, take a very brief session on uh, summary writing. So, summarizing your work for two different audience. Okay, one is a pure abstract, okay, which is an abstract which goes part of your report, which goes part of your uh, uh, thesis or a journal article. Okay, that abstract is for a technical audience who are your peers. Okay, they are peers, so they know broadly, at least they are science educated or they are in your discipline, your department's discipline. Okay. That is one group. The second group is general audience. Okay. So, science writing for general audience. These are the two topics I am going to uh, take uh, quickly now. So, summarizing technical. So, why is abstract important? You all know because abstract is one thing which is read after the title and abstract is free. Right? All the abstracts are free to be downloaded. So, if you have to capture an audience or if you have to get your abstract up in a search engine, you have to be clearly conveying what the message is. So, somebody reads it, they should feel the need to download the paper and read it in detail. So, an abstract is in short a complete paper written in a short form complete paper. I will tell you why complete it is. So, just as we said yesterday that you have to write two uh, iterations of the uh, introduction, one for yourself and one for the actual audience. Abstract also you write twice. One as a guiding draft for yourself. So, abstract that you write will, will actually be a shortened paper. I will show you how it will be a shortened paper. And then finally, for the readers, how does uh, an abstract? So, this is the structure of the paper which we saw before. A paper begins with an introduction, the background, then there is a problem, then the results and discussion, then, then conclusions. This is the overall <coughs> paper that is what it contains, correct. An abstract should contain almost all of this, okay. A general abstract should contain almost all of this except they are just in one line or two lines. For example, it could be one or two sentences of the introduction or to the field. So, this line when you say it is a basic introduction, it means that anybody who has a reasonable knowledge in science or engineering should be able to understand. Anybody, like for example, I will well, take an example here. There are people from electrical, mechanical, uh, basic sciences, and humanities. Now, if you all of them are educated in science at least up to school level, right? And most of them are in their undergraduate also, they have taken science. So, the first opening line should be understandable by this audience. Okay, so, that, that is this broad picture that I have shown. So, begin with any scientist or any engineer can understand. Then two or three lines which is expanding on that introduction, somebody in your department can understand. Okay. It is not everybody in your college, but somebody in electrical department you are in electrical, somebody in the electrical department should understand. So, that comes a little bit background, detailed background. After that, in one statement, state the problem, which is the question. What is the question you are addressing? You are given the background information. What is the question that you are addressing in one line? This line may not be understood by everybody, not necessarily people in your department. Mostly people in your area, that particular area only will be able to understand. So, that becomes a specific question that you are addressing in that topic. It should not be general or anybody should understand, no. That should be understood and appreciated only by the person in that discipline. Then one line following it, the answer, the question and an answer. What is the main result that you got, which 
answers the question you started off with. That's all. This core thing is just one center. The center part is just the problem and the result is one of them. Then comes expansion of the result. So you started off wide and narrowed down to the problem. It is like started off with your university, came to your department, came to your specific area. That is the problem. You found the result. Then you have to expand back in a similar way. What does this result imply? What was expected previously that made this result different? Did you expect something else? Did people expect something else that made it different? That is one thing. And then expand it to something which in a general context. So what does it imply to your department? That is your discipline. What does that result imply to your discipline? And the last sentence is, what does it imply to general science? Okay, so you start with general science, department, specific area, result, department, general science. Okay, so this is how an abstract is also structured. So this is taken from the magazine, science magazine Nature, which has got this uh, specs. I have slightly modified it to uh, expand because Nature is again a little bit specific, it is not very general. So I have just slightly modified that, So, but by and large it is there. One suggested activity which we will do later is we will share some uh, material with you. Okay. In that material we will ask you, I mean ask the participants to identify which is the introduction statement, which is the problem, which is the result, what is the implication and so on. So we will give some of these things and ask the people to identify. So maybe we will have two or three papers so that you can distribute to different uh, people from different disciplines and they can identify that. The other detail assignment that we will give is ask them to read uh, a paper. Okay. So since now we are dealing with mature people who are already done their PhD or doing their PhD, they will be able to appreciate what a journal article is. They read any journal article and then ask them to rewrite the abstract. Okay, that is one activity we will do. But how do you use this for your students, particularly the undergraduate students? What you should do is you give them uh, simple articles in uh, which they understand. Okay? There may be simple, uh, need not be detailed research articles, like articles that come in uh, popular science magazines. Right? In India, we have the sadhana, you have uh, current science. Current science is a little heavy, but sadhana and similar magazines have uh, articles which is a resonance, for example. All these things have articles which is understood by even undergraduate students. So you can ask them to rewrite. So this reading a paper and rewriting the abstract will actually help them to rewrite in this structure, the structure which I showed. So this will actually help them to write the abstract for any work they are doing. Okay? So this is some exercise which we will do in December. Yeah. No abstract has to be submitted before you are submitting the Yes. Abstract. Yes. So uh, are you including that particular part in some no, so synopsis again. In some, sort of, in some cases, it is called as a summary. Correct. In some cases, it is called as a synopsis. synopsis. So synopsis, we are not had de dealing separately because it is extended of whatever I told you now. It is instead of having one or two lines, you have few paragraphs of all of those things. They have to uh, expect it to write down chapter wise. What are the chapters? Correct. In the, your PhD thesis. Right. So we. So that's why we actually. That's why I'm ex, uh, expecting what is to be written when you are expecting that chapter-wise you have to write summary. Then yeah. what is to be written? Uh, right. The answer to your question is no. We don't. Uh, we're not doing it in this course because we thought we should not specifically target only research audience. Uh, some of the things which I told is applicable to both research as well as people who are writing normal project reports okay even project reports need a summary when project reports need a proper organizing of matter uh, synopsis extended abstract all these things is usually only for research audience and we didn't want to specifically target only them although you are right that it's important for them 
Okay, so uh, do you want to take quick questions on this uh, abstract writing? Anything? Uh, if we give an exercise on abstract writing, uh, I provided some model to them. If you ask them to rewrite, uh, what will they do? Already it is uh, very good. Uh, no, no. So there are two levels. The uh, first thing is that uh, the exercise which we will give them, because when they are doing it for the first time, even identifying which line corresponds to an introduction, mm -hmm. which is a problem statement, which is a result, which is an implication, is not easy for the first time people. The Many first level we can ask them to identify first level, these yes. things. Uh, and then when I am asking to them to rewrite, I am not going to do it for something abstract is well already well written. Okay? Something in which it is not so well written and not all abstracts need to follow this. Very specific journals, they will not have this general broad introduction. They will already start at the problem statement. They need not start at the broad, as I said, institute wide, department wise and so on. Okay? So some of them will directly start with the problem statement. So if you take articles like that and ask them to read and rewrite, but ask them to rewrite as though they are doing the whole thing. So that will definitely be a, a exercise which they cannot simply copy from the existing abstract. So will you be giving or we have to give those things? Uh, we will suggest one or two from our side. It will be nice if you can find out something because you will know ultimately who are the people who are coming. Suppose in your uh, area, there are only people who are coming only in English literature, right? So maybe the what we give may not be sound so interesting. We will try to find um, maybe one from we'll give one from humanities, one from as I did this time, one from humanities, one from electrical sciences, one from mechanical sciences, uh, mechanical and basic sciences one, electrical one, and maybe biological sciences one. So we'll have four. Uh, articles which we will be using throughout for different exercises. From the abstract, hmm. there is a general use of the time of the object for that. If you are using the abstract, keywords are... Yeah, so keywords, as I said, I stressed yesterday, but I didn't have a uh, lot of time to elaborate on that. Uh, in the detailed lecture, I will be elaborating on the keywords part, that it has to be, the keywords has to come in the abstract, it has to come in the introduction, title, everywhere, consistently. This is what I point I made yesterday.